Hampton, Hampton, Rose Grove, Burnley Barracks, Burnley Central. I just tried to film like a five minute vlog for you guys but there was a train coming past and the announcement woman wouldn't shut the hell up so i watched it back and you couldn't hear a thing so i'm gonna restart this again um i am actually headed to oh my god girl <laughs> i'm actually headed to glasgow today i don't know why i'm complaining about announcements when i'm literally sat in a very busy train station this is preston station in lancashire um what was I saying? I can't remember now. Yeah, so I'm headed to Glasgow. I've never been to Scotland before, but my friend Ryan is there at the moment. Some of you may know him as the opera guy or the opera man. I can't remember which one he is. Um, he's gonna get so mad at me for messing that up because he literally has his name trademarked. I, I'm sure it's the opera guy. Anyway, so I'm gonna go and meet Ryan. Um, I have all my busking stuff with me, so I don't know how long I'm gonna be there, but probably at least a couple of days. It should be fun. Right, I made it. Here's Ryan. Ryan just sent me to the station. Um, I, that was the worst train journey of my entire life. I literally spent the two hours just sat with my head on the table trying not to throw up. So I'll keep you guys updated when I get to my hotel. I just need to de bomb it at the moment. Okay, we're in the travel lodge now and I just want to reiterate how disgusting that train journey was. I got on, so I booked a seat, right? I was in like Coach D carriage 50 and I booked a seat specifically next to the luggage bit because obviously I have so much crap when I'm coming out busking. Um, I don't usually book seats. I always feel really awkward like asking someone to move if they're there. Anyway, I booked a seat and I got on the train and when I walked down to my seat, there was this family, Ryan's singing in the shower. There was this family sat where I was meant to be. And I was like, oh. hi guys, sorry. Um, I think I booked this seat out. And they all looked at each other and they were like, we've been told to sit here. And I looked at my phone and I looked at them and I was like, oh yeah, uh, it's just that I've booked like this specific seat. I probably didn't say it as, anally as that but uh it was just really awkward and they kind of refused to move and then they said they were like what are we meant to do he's got one leg and one of them was a fucking amputee and i had to it was too late for me to say oh no it doesn't matter but i literally had to just stand there and watch this family get this man with one leg out of my seat into his wheelchair and he had to sit in the wheelchair for the whole two-hour train journey and Oh my god, it was so bad. But at the same time, I had booked the seat. So, moral dilemma. Horrible situation. And then I was... I, I was kind of glad that I... Well, I was very glad that I asked for my seat because I was horrifically travel sick the whole time. And I just sat with my head on the desk like this for two hours. And had I had to stand up or be in a seat without a table, I wouldn't have made it. They'd have been sick everywhere. But really... If you know that you have, this may be like a hot take, but if you know that you've got a disabled person with you and it's going to be a struggle getting on and off the train and finding somewhere to sit on the same, finding somewhere to sit on the train, why would you not book a seat ahead of time? Anyway, uh, Ryan's just in the shower, like I said. So I am just going to sit down for five minutes and then we're going to head out and explore a little bit. So this is Argyle Street. This is now becoming one of the best shopping streets in Glasgow. Because yeah. the Marks and Spencers is down there. It's the only one that's left in Glasgow City Centre. There used to be one on Sucky Hall Street, but it's closed. So this is the only Marks. It was a sports director of Tiki Max and Primark. So the same shops that are on Sucky Hall Street. But Marks and Spencer's is gone, so Sports Direct, so everyone has to come down here. This is why I like travelling with Ryan, because he is the fountain of all wisdom when it comes to like busking spots and just general so, city knowledge. This area here is the main pitch on this street, on Argyle Street, and it's a completely different vibe. Sorry. <laughs> how big everything is in this city. Like the buildings are about three times the size of buildings I've ever seen before in my life. So I've been told that I can't 
be, I'm a little bit pissed, I've had it a few times, but I've been told that you can't be in Scotland and not try haggis, so I've been forced to order all of the haggis from experience. It reads, it's not, I can't even remember what haggis is, but it's not something nice. Taste it, it's I'm nice. frightened, I don't, yeah, just try it, it's tasty. It's made from oats right. and stuff. I'll, I'll have a little bit if you have a little bit. Oh, yeah, a bit, yeah, okay. Get a fall. Do you know, it, it actually smells like meat. I don't know if you like it, but it needs more pepper. It's not bad, but I can tell that it's something... Funky. Yeah. I don't know if I can get... It needs more pepper. I just know that it's something... Horrible, like I can't remember what it is, but I know that it is something horrible. It is. A sheep's stomach. But it's stuffed. Please wait for me to swallow this before you tell me. It's Go stuffed on. with the heart, the kidneys, the liver, and the lungs, otherwise known as the pluck. It's all minced together with oats, spices, salt, pepper, and stuffed into the sheep's stomach, tied at both ends and boiled. It's like a boil in the bag. Yeah, no thank you, you can have that. Oh, well, that was an, oh my god, it's all over the table now. That was an interesting experience. I can officially say I've tried haggis now, and I've never been trying haggis again. You know it's not peppery enough. Ringing. Mm -hmm. He Flask. doesn't have a cone in his head, uh, Flask falls. Why? Because he is the, the patron saint of Flask. You heard him, people. Train spotting too. Mm hmm. When they go to the cash machine and try all the cards with the pin number 1690, you are now walking up to the cash machine that they use in the film. I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't recognise it. I watched Train Spotting too, but. It was very unmemorable. The well, first one's memorable. The this here one. is the cash machine. I don't think I'm allowed to film a cash machine. You shouldn't film a cash machine. Surely not. It's like. It's like security. I'll get. It's not. Swatted or something. I'll get swatted. Good morning. I wanted to do a vlog for you guys last night while we were out but i ended up getting really drunk and i forgot um so i'm still in the travel lodge ryan has already he got ryan gets up at like the crack of dawn to go and busk so he will have been at the pitch for like seven eight in the morning he's probably nearly finished by now and he's gonna hand the busking pitch over to me so i'm about to leave i got all my stuff here i'm just loading it up on my trolley and then i will take you out into glasgow you should also know that i travel like tramp when i am traveling <laughs> i i live like a i just i wear the same clothes like i literally had this outfit on yesterday i have forgotten to pack deodorant and i forgot to pack toothpaste so i need to go and buy some of them before i go out to work otherwise i'll i don't know i don't want to be smelly so um yeah i'm gross when i'm traveling i'm gonna try and find ryan now but this city is so huge i have no idea where i'm going i think he showed me where he was gonna be yesterday but I am silly and my memory's awful, so I'm just going to find it. I'm now all set up. Um, I think this is maybe Buchanan Street. I might have that a little bit wrong, but I'm all set up. I've been singing for maybe like an hour. I just kind of forgot to keep you guys updated. Um, but I'll show you a little bit of how it goes down before I go on my live stream. This is called Arms Left. I hope you like it. If you're into sad music, it might be your thing. Um, you can find my brand new album on all streaming platforms. So if you'd like to purchase a CD, I'll have a smell of
I hope you like that. That was called Fox Chase. That was one of my own songs. Um, I basically do this full time and I travel all around the UK and um, going to different places and trying to write and promote my own music. Uh, thank you for everybody's generosity. It really helps me to keep doing that and keep being creative. If you would like to take a listen to my original music, that one was called Fox Chase and you can find it through my little sign. Just over here, uh, I'm on most things like Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, all the rest. Uh, I do have some CDs, thank you. Some CDs available at the front as well. Busk done. I can't believe how expensive hotels were tonight. This room literally, well, it's not as tiny as I thought, but and it's quite a big bed, but this room cost me £90 and that was the cheapest hotel I could get tonight. At least it's got a gorgeous view of the city. Oh my God, like shit. I'm so, my skin, oh my God, my skin looks awful. I've caught the sun massively today. This is so sad, but at the end of a busking day, I am so emotionally and physically exhausted. I will just come back. <laughs> I will sometimes just come back to my hotel room and just like cry for 10, 15 minutes. And it's not that I am sad. It's like out of tiredness and out of, it's just like crying out of exhaustion. It's like an energy release. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. It's a it's like therapeutic. So now I'm gonna have a shower because I'm sweaty and gross. And then I'll probably go and get some food because I've not eaten yet today. Um, have I any gossip? What happened today? Oh, right. So those of you who are on the live stream will know that I had a run in with this. <laughs> I fight with everyone wherever I go. I can't help it, it's in my genetics. I had a fight with this guy in a shop today because I, I was live streaming and my power bank died. So. I ran into like this little corner shop and I bought a power bank and I said before I bought it to the guy working there, I was like, is this pre-charged? Does this have charge in it already? Um, because I need it because I'm about to use it out on the street. Uh, and he was like, yeah, they all come pre-charged. So I was like, oh great, I bought it. It was only £15, but I bought it and then I went and went outside, I went to use it and it had zero charge and there was nothing in it. So it was useless to me. <laughs> so I took it back in the shop and I was like, hi, um, this has no charge in it, can I have a refund, please? And he refused to give me a refund and he was like, oh, you've opened the box. And I said, yes, but you've sold it to me. Like, it's a misinformed purchase because I only bought it because you told me that it was full charge and that's why I need it. And we went back and forth for a while. It wasn't pretty. Those of you who are on live stream will have seen it. it I just wanted my money back. I was pissed off and, um, he was just refusing to refund me. It's it wasn't it wasn't my proudest moment. But I think my point stands. Uh <laughs> I was obviously coming across like a bit of a crazy person because some girl in the queue behind me walked out the shop and she went, She's effing crackpot referencing me. I was like, Are you talking about me? And she was like, Yeah. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> and then and then I just didn't have anything to say back to after that. But um yeah, stressful. So I did manage to get a refund eventually because my friend Ryan Opperman, who you saw before, he is like six foot three, six foot four, and he's, I guess, a little bit intimidating looking to some. Um, so he walked in the shop and he was like, give her a refund now. 
and they, they slammed the money down on the desk and refunded me because Ryan asked him to. Which is pissed and annoying because I don't think I would have got it if it was just me asking. But at least, at least I got it back, that's all that matters. Okay, so I've got changed into my uh, clapped attire. These are literally my pajamas, but I just want to go and explore the city because I've not had a chance to do that yet because obviously I've been working. I need to get some food as well. I just realised I've not eaten at all today. Britannia Hotel, ducking myself. Something that I don't discuss very often with you guys is, of course, I am hopping from city to city like my entire life it's what i do as a job so uh, i go all around the uk and i go to all these beautiful different cities and they're all gorgeous in their own right but it does sometimes get a little bit depressing a little bit boring when you are walking through and it, they've all kind of got the same layout like you've just got all like brick buildings that sunset is gorgeous hopefully you understand what i mean they all just start to get a bit samey samey after a while this could easily be Liverpool. And this bit kind of looks like the bottom of West Street in Sheffield. But I guess it's nice that here is so big. Because I, for me, this is huge. This is like 10 times the size of any city I've been to. And I've been to London when I was about 10, but I can't remember because it was so long ago. For me, this is the size of what I think London would be like. There's about five different high streets. I think part of the reason that I wanted to start doing these YouTube video vlogs, oh, well, that is a video vlog, video log, sorry, a vlog. The reason I wanted to start doing these vlogs is um, I often fixate on the bad things in my life and my memory is shit. So I want to find a way to document all the good experiences so that when I'm feeling down, I can go back onto my page and look at all the great times I've had and all the beautiful cities that I have explored. I was gonna try and get something healthy but I've not eaten all day and I'm ravenous so I might just go Mackey's. I can see it in the near distance. Hello. Ooh they have a chopsticks as well though. In fact have any of you guys used Too Good To Go? Is this app right? Um, and I didn't find out about it until late last year. Loads of big chain restaurants will give away leftover food at the end of the night and you can buy a magic bag. It's like usually in between two to five pounds. Greg's do it, Starbucks do it, Costa does it. And you can buy like this big bag of food and it's often got about 20, 30 quids worth in it. It's really good. So when I'm traveling and I'm trying to be cheap, I live off magic bags. So I might see if there's any here. These are so cool. Good morning. I'm just crouched on the floor trying to charge my phone before I leave. Um, it is sweltering in this hotel room. I'm about to, I'm going to head out for a bus as soon as my stuff's charged. But yeah, it's absolutely, it's like an oven. I'm on the 11th floor, so the windows won't open. I'm guessing that's a safety thing, so I don't, uh, you know. Um, smart move, to be fair, smart move. But I can't wait to leave this room. I'm dying a thousand deaths in here. Eat with this camera and this light, and you can literally see every single pore, every single flake. Girl, that is awful, and that spot needs popping as well. Shall I do this on camera? No, that's gross, Amy. Don't do that. Big flake just flew up onto the floor. The nose piercing also looks a little bit um, maybe infected. <laughs> Got it done two weeks. No, a couple. Oh! <gasps> Oh god, that's not good. That is not good at all. Shit. Okay, that, yeah, that's infected. Amazing, love that for me. Leaving the hotel. Honestly, I don't know how I get all this stuff around. It's so heavy. Um, and this is not an ideal setup, not at all. I've got like two speakers and a suitcase falling off this. And a guitar and a really heavy bag on my back. Getting through doors. Getting through doors is a struggle with all this equipment. 
Granted, it's the same outfit that I've been wearing for the past two days. Um, but I just feel like it's giving such Tomb Raider vibes today. I don't know where the camera is on this one. Yeah, I've got my the wrong way around. to blur this out but there is a seagull eating a pigeon the seagulls in scotland are a different breed i swear to god what the fuck i'm definitely gonna have to blur this out there's no, not a chance i can put that on youtube <laughs> So um, this is my last one. This is called Bones and this is one of my own songs. If you'd like to listen to it online, you can find it through my sign and then I also have some CDs at the front as well. So don't you go get these wild speculations Cause I'm just unlikely to go Tell me how try to shift the condition And you will end up all on your own Okay, so I realised that I didn't vlog like any of today's busk. Uh, I've been on live all day. God, I am so dehydrated. I've not been drinking enough water and I've literally just done a seven hour shift. Uh, seven hours? Probably over that actually. Um, but we've done, it was slow to start. I literally did about 20 quid in two hours but it picked up and I think I've come away with just short of 150, I'll have to count up properly. But that's great. It's a long shift for that much money, but it's, uh, I'm happy. It pays, pays for hotels and it um, feeds me and waters me, so it'll do. Uh, I already started packing up, but I'll kind of quickly show you myself today. Oh, sh this bloody tripod's falling apart, honestly. This is where I am, I am on Argyle Street today, or Boyle, Argyle, I'm not sure. I was on Buchanan Street yesterday. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. I took the spot off Ryan at about one o'clock, no, 12 o'clock. And we basically had the whole street to ourselves. No one else has set up. There was a guy very briefly at the top before, but he wasn't there for long. I don't know if I said before, but my arch nemesis, my busking arch nemesis, Bartek, was here before. I doubt he's gonna watch this YouTube video, so I'll just say it, Bartek. You guys may have seen my TikTok video about it in York. Me and Matt got to the busking pitch really early in the morning and there was a trolley across the road, like about that far. Um, with like some, some musical stuff on it, but nobody was with it and we waited around for a while, no one turned up, so we set up. Because you can't reserve the pitch by just leaving your stuff on it. And then the guy came back nearly two hours later and he was like, I've left my stuff here, I want to play, I was coming back at 11. And we said, tough shit, hon, you weren't here and you've been gone for two hours, so we set up and he wasn't happy he set up anyway and started playing over us and it just ruined our income for the day probably ruined his as well so yeah he's my busking nemesis apparently he's in glasgow today on the street parallel to me but i'll walk around now and see if he's there. but first i need to go and book a hotel because it's 
going on at 8 o'clock in the evening and I've still not booked anywhere. Fingers crossed I can get one. He didn't mean to, but homeless guy came and stood on the floor, so I hope they're not broken. And while I'm having a little rant, there's also no Nat West in Glasgow, they've all shut down, and I'm with Nat West, so I'm having to carry around weeks coins in my bag, it's very heavy. If this on camera, you get so many people like off their head coming up and coming way too close to you, trying to hug you, trying to shake your hand every 30 seconds. The worst is when they ask you for money because they can see that you've got money out in front of you, so they target you um, and they say, Oh, come on, can I just have three pounds for a sandwich? and then three pounds turns into five pounds. Like, you can't, it's really tough because you can't give them money because. From experience if you give the money as a busker more often than not they will tell their friends then you get 20 people coming over asking for money and before you know it you've given away your day's earnings so i had a guy today who would not leave me alone he was obviously mental he came cycling down the high street shouting i couldn't even tell what he was saying he was like screaming obscenities and he said something about like pakistan that's all i could make out something about pakistan and he told someone to f off um, and then he came over on his bike and he was like, I want five pounds for a sandwich from you. And I said, well, I also would like to be able to afford five pound sandwiches, but I can't. That's why I'm out here doing this on the street. And I have rent to pay, so no. And he wouldn't leave me alone. And luckily this lovely lady from New Zealand came over and helped me. She was lovely. I, can't, I didn't get her name, but if you are a New Zealand lady from, where did she say she was from? central New Zealand it begins with an A no or does it well if you were in Glasgow and you're from New Zealand and you helped out a busker today then thank you lifesaver Another day, another lift. Oh god, it's tiny in here. Oh, we're back. Ah. Right. Mm -hmm. Seven ten. I've got a key card in my mouth. Oh, it smells nice. Oh, it's quite nice in here. This is a cheap fish hotel as well. Right, come on, please sit through the door. Oh. Uh, light switch. Cool. Right, this is uh, basic. Hang on. It's basic, but it's a bed and it's a massive bed. And checkout time isn't till 11, which is quite as well. Uh, fairly nice view. Not as nice as last night, but a fairly nice view. And we're only an eight minute walk from the high street. Last night I was in the Britannia, which is way out of the city centre. It took me about half an hour to walk in this morning with all my stuff. Ditching my equipment, I'm going straight back out to get some food because I've not eaten all day. I've just been running off coffee as usual and all the food places shut really soon, so I need to rush. Good morning. We're on day three, um, I've just woke up, it's like seven in the morning, um, and I did like, oh my god, my, I can hear my, that my voice is going, I busked for like eight hours yesterday from about twelve to half seven, eight, 
Um, and then I got back to my hotel, got a KFC, went straight to sleep for about six hours and now I'm up again to do the very same thing today. Mm -hmm, on the road again. Everything of mine is constantly broken, so I'm just trying to balance my trolley. All the guitar fanatics in my chat are gonna be screaming right now. Trust me, this guitar is so battered beyond belief. I have taken this out on the street and used it like this for the last two, nearly three years, so uh, it's really beyond saving now. So it's fine, it just works as a trolley stand. And then if I can get it to balance my sign, it's quite windy today, I might have to strap it on, but my sign goes quite nicely on there so that people can scan it properly. Please stay up, I'm going to have to pin this down one sec. And then I can um, clip my, oh, never mind, I can clip my tripod onto the top when I get it balanced right. Hold on. Okay, we're pretty much set up. I'm not going to start yet because it's way too early, it's only about half eight. So we'll just wait around for a bit, we've secured the pitch. If anybody else turns up, I am ready to fight with them. So I'm just going to sit and eat my breakfast and um, people watch for a little bit. Okay, so I didn't film like any of my bus today because I'm so sleep deprived. I'm just exhausted. There's been no vlog today, but um, I think I'm going to head home tonight. I've had a fantastic time in Glasgow. The busking community is lovely. They're so, the good thing about here it's, um, in most cities you'll find that people fight over spots and it's like, you know, you've got to get there dead early to get a pitch. But here, there's like 10 high streets, so everybody gets a turn, everyone gets a pitch. And uh, everyone makes good money, it's brilliant. My friend too, it's got a fantastic voice. Breaking a heart in a I'm absolutely dreading the train journey back though because I know how travel sick I was on the way here and if it's anything like that on the way back I'm just gonna jump out the window. I should maybe get some travel sick tablets before I leave. Ryan said that the reason I was travel sick on the train is because it's something called a tilting train which allows it to go faster around corners and it's just like rocks back and forth so that's probably why. Oh, I forgot to say, I got my mum and my sister a little souvenir as well. They've both got a Scottish scarf. Home time. I'm so not looking forward to this three hour train back. I think I'm gonna have to ask for a ramp on off the train because this is gonna be way too heavy for me to lift on. Um, it was okay on the way here, but I didn't have it stacked up the same and I've kind of amassed some things while I've been here. Um. I just look at people walking around and just think it's so strange. Like we're all just like, organisms walking around and we've got this little like a society and it's just strange isn't it i think i have made myself overtired and i'm just having an existential crisis really long queue for the train i'm gonna get on my train goes direct to london but i'm getting off part way at preston but i'm a little bit worried that i might not be able to get my stuff on i've asked for a ramp but nobody's on so so i made it on the train that was so stressful they put me on a carriage with like no seats i bought my ticket obviously but um they did give me an allocated seat 
like there's no space in the luggage bit of my stuff so i've just kind of had to leave it in the doorways the people are trying to get like big suitcases out i don't know what to do with this now there's no room um and i'm gonna have to sit on the floor because there's no seats and i need to be here to see if i I need to be here so that I can move it in case people can't get out. Stressful, I hate trains so much. At least if I'm sat on the floor on this one, I might not get travel sick. Fingers crossed anyway. It's too hot, I just feel gross. I need a deep cleanse shower. I need to go and have a bath in the or something. Just this second got back into Preston. Oh, they're gonna miss their train. Lovely man, just help me get my stuff off i was panicking big style because they couldn't get me a ramp to get off the train apparently i needed to book it in advance and i did not know this um so i was freaking out because i have so much with me and i've there was no nat west banks in glasgow right so i've had to carry the week's coins around with me and it's heavy as shit anyway i'm off the train now i'm all good nearly back we just need to get one more train back to blackburn or i might just be a lazy bitch and get a taxi <laughs> 